result of that. And he said, Ian, you have got to look in the mirror uh, and see who you are, and then you can look up above and see who I am and say how great thou art. Um, so for me, I, I wish I could tell you a story about how has character manifested itself outward, uh, but uh, at least at, as the journey goes so far, uh, the Lord has caused me to look inward and say, uh, Ian, you need to rely on me and not yourself. And I will get you to that place, and you will raise a hand in celebration when I get you there. Um, so that's kind of my character journey. It's by no means over. And uh, I'm thankful he's taking me there. Uh, I, wish he'd taken me, uh, I wish he had taken me on a different route, but that's not my call. Uh, uh, I'm just thankful that he, uh, that he took, me, uh, took me where he's taken me so far and that he'll take me all the way home. Thanks, Ian. Um, that's always a tough question to answer, but uh, I think one thing that uh, has been, uh, I think, kind of recurring in my life in the past two to three years is um, I've had a couple of uh, people I've partnered with or needed help to work with um, in growing what I'm doing. Um, and uh, a lot of uh, the reasons for which I went out on my own were a strong conviction that God was speaking to me and telling me this is what I needed to do. And that uh, if I believed him and believed what I felt he was telling me, that things would work out. Um, and so through that process, uh, several friends have walked through that with me. And, and on occasion they said, are you sure? Are you sure this is what God wants? Um, and I said, I'm sure. They said, well, how's business? Well, at the beginning it wasn't so great. I said, are you sure you don't want to jump back into the law firm? Because it was great over there, wasn't it? Um, I said, yeah, it was great over there. But this is what God wants me to do. Um, and so through that hope in something greater than myself or my own capabilities or even the people around me to help support what is going on, uh, that unwavering faith in knowing that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing um, has really carried the day. In fact, I have somebody working with me now um, who definitely does not know the Lord, but we get into a lot of theological discussions these days um, because they've seen this unwavering um, commitment to continue down this path that... Um, Thank God, and in this past year has been growing at about 20% a month. So um, it took a while for the thing to take off, but it looks like it's heading that direction. And I only give thanks to God because anyone in my shoes, not looking through the eyes of faith, would have quit uh, quite a long time ago. So There's a principle in investing that um, when the market goes down, you should do what? You should buy. What do a lot of people do when the market goes down? Sell. And uh, I've been thinking for years about the analogy to investing in growing your character. When times get tough, is the perfect time to get firmer with yourself about character. And what's the rest of the people doing when times get tough? They're easing up on their standards. And here's my view. Tough times invest more deeply in doing the right thing because it's right, even though the temptation is to the opposite. When everything is good, people who do the right thing because it's right look more similar to people who are just greedy because they can do the right thing and keep making the money that, that they want. When times are tough and you do the right thing, you stand out and then when I'll go back to the market analogy the market returns you're on a different platform and so the, the times we trip and fall and the times when it gets really rough are growth times they're very important times and so I, I just think it's I think it's providential that that Mike and, and Bruce really wanted to go after the character issue which we're going to be um, looking forward to at our lunch today um, we'd love to have you join a collaborative sometime. This is our table over here. Val and Lisa are sitting there, and we'd love to talk with you. Craig Waller, Leaders Collaborative Group Number One. Ian Davis, Leaders Collaborative Group Number Four. Carrie Frost, Leaders Collaborative Group Number Five. Meg Henny Gibson, Leaders Collaborative Group Number Two, are part of a larger group now of um, of alums, and it's a beautiful thing to have people who have your back. 
when it's about doing the right thing in growing great business. So please give them a hand. Thank you. Oh, can I, can I, can I, just a sec. Uh, just w w a comment. It's interesting that the four of us are represented here. Leaders Collaborative um, teaches what it teaches from three vantage points. One is leadership of self, the other is leadership of organization, and the other is leadership of, of community. And it's just kind of interesting that, that the Lord has touched each one of the four of us in one of those three areas. For me, uh, he touched me in terms of leadership of self. Uh, for Craig, he touched in terms of leadership of organization and to some degree self as well. And for Meg, it seems like he touched uh, her in terms of leadership of community. And uh, so it just, it, it seems like the, f the full uh, panorama of what serving leaders does is represented here. And I know we've all been tremendously blessed. It was a life-changing experience for me. Um, and it was the day before or two days before that, that the Lord said to me, Ian, you need to be there. And for the first time in a long, long time, I said, okay, Lord. And, uh, and I'm, I'm beginning to be a different man. So thank you very much, John and Lisa and the whole gang. Christy Tura, come on up. Um, Mike and I want uh, Christy to make a, an announcement. Christy is with the Coalition for Christian Outreach Katie, excuse me. Katie Terrar, my, my, my bad. Uh, Katie is with the Coalition for Christian Outreach, and um, uh, they have been involved in Pittsburgh since the early 60s, working with university students on now 80 plus, maybe growing to 100 campuses in several states. And they do an event every February that we want you to know about, especially. Thank you, John. Um, some of you may have heard of the CCO, the Coalition for Christian Outreach. As John mentioned, where I work, we work with college students. Mainly, that's our mission, transforming college students to transform the world. But how we know our work and what God has called us to, our mission is happening, is to hear these kinds of stories from people who are 5, 10, 20 years out of college. And the great opportunity and commitment of our organization is to introduce college students to Jesus Christ, to have their lives transformed by the gospel, and then to help them think about what it means to live in response to the transformation that comes with the gospel, to be Christ's hands and feet in the world. And so it's great to be in this room of professionals who are trying to figure this stuff out too. I think that college students have a luxury. They don't understand of time to really think about these things, right? When you're in college, you think there's so much to do and there's so much you have to worry about, but really you have this luxury of thinking all the time about these things. Um, what, what we started doing last year in partnership with Serving Leaders is adding a track to our annual Jubilee Conference, which helps college students think about what Christ's Lordship over every area of life will mean for them. Uh, we've added a track called Jubilee Professional, and we want to invite you all to consider joining us this year at Jubilee Professional. So on your table are these little, which I'm holding upside down, little rave cards about our conference, which again is largely directed to college students, but um, I found that people experience the whole conference um, and take a lot out of it, but particularly on Friday, February 18th, we'll have Jubilee Professional happening downtown in Pittsburgh, um, and the track goes during the day just for professionals um, to engage these same ideas. Um, and then that evening, we invite you, part of the Jubilee Professionals, to join us for the conference with 2,000 college students as well. So. Um, our website is on here. We are in the process of launching our information for the year, and I hope that we'll be back in December to talk with more specifics about what to expect. We just wanted to put it on your radar and really invite you um, to, to join together and join with us as we continue to pursue these things. So thanks for the time, and I'll hand this back to Mike. Great. Let's have another hand for John Stalwart and our uh, panel up here today from PLF Serving Leaders. Thank you all very, very much.